While many people know Adelaide is Australia's driest capital city, many don't realise this city's dependence upon groundwater for irrigating food, maintaining its green open space and for a myriad of industrial purposes. One of the challenges of managing groundwater is that it's below ground. However, we can see some of the changes to groundwater above ground. At the time of settlement, natural springs were recorded in areas that we now know as the suburbs of Springfield, Mitcham and Panorama, and along the coast at Kingston Park. These springs occurred as the pressure in the aquifers pushed water up from the ground naturally. Since settlement, our use of groundwater has exceeded the rate at which it is naturally replenished, and as a consequence, the springs are lost to us now. Prior to Adelaide's development as a city, it had a number of natural wetlands that were fed by springs from shallow aquifers. We saw this demonstrated in 2009, when the Torrens Lake was drained by accident at the weir. What was interesting was how soon water started to seep into the base. This was from the shallow aquifer beneath seeping up into the lake bed. The lake filling from the bottom was one of the rare examples when groundwater could be seen above ground. Not only is groundwater difficult to see, but development has meant that many of the natural connections between surface water, like wetlands, and groundwater have been lost. For example, the wetlands around West Lakes and West Beach were drained to the sea to make space for development. For the past 175 years, our main connection with groundwater has been to drill bores and pump groundwater for various uses, and as a result, we have unknowingly changed the character, quality and volume of this resource. Today, this is how we know about the groundwater conditions. A network of bores and wells has been drilled across the Adelaide Plains and are used for monitoring the groundwater. These bores are used to monitor the depth of groundwater and the groundwater quality. And over time, we can build up a picture of the changes in the groundwater level and the changes in quality. And we use this to manage the resource. Most of the groundwater used commercially in the Adelaide Plains is from two tertiary limestone aquifers called the T1 and T2. Intensive pumping from some bores has produced codes of depressions in these aquifers. When a bore is pumped excessively, the water sucked into the surrounding aquifer lowers the water level around the bore. The effect created in the water level around the bore is similar to what one sees when the plug is pulled from a bathtub. This conical shaped feature is the cone of depression. Cones of depression can mean that water users need to deepen their bores, which is costly. Flow reversal may occur, and depending on the location of a cone of depression, seawater may be drawn into the aquifer, or leakage from more salty aquifers may lead to increasing salinity. The water may be degraded, so its usefulness is not maintained for future generations. In the northern Adelaide Plains, groundwater is mainly extracted from the T2 aquifer for horticultural use. Extractions have created a long-standing cone of depression under Virginia. However, over the past decade, this cone of depression has recovered due to the new availability of water from the Bolivar Wastewater Treatment Plant. From monitoring of water levels in the T2 aquifer, we have found seasonal fluctuation in groundwater levels. This is due to water pumping peaking in the summer irrigation season. Such variations between low pumping and high pumping seasons are generally between 5 and 10 metres, but are up to 30 metres near the centre of Virginia. In the Kangaroo Flat area, northwest of Gawler, groundwater levels in observation bores in close proximity to irrigation wells show seasonal fluctuations of up to 20 metres between winter and summer. Not only have changes in groundwater levels been detected, long-term monitoring has indicated salinity increases in the T2 aquifer. Salt readings have increased steadily over 30 to 40 years in the T2 aquifer. Although it may have stabilised in some places in the last two years, there have been instances where irrigation bores have reported sharp increases in groundwater salinities. Several bores also have levels of salinity above 1500 milligrams per litre, which is beyond what many vegetable crops can tolerate. Why would salinities increase in the T2 aquifer? One suggestion is leakage from the overlying shallower, more salty aquifers. As the pressure drops, the more salty water is drawn into the T2 aquifer. In central Adelaide, groundwater is used more for industry in irrigating sporting grounds and school ovals rather than for growing food. Most of the groundwater extraction in central Adelaide comes from the T1 aquifer. The most intensive groundwater use of this aquifer is in the Thebit industrial zone and for golf courses and recreation reserves in the West Lakes and Grange areas. Both areas have subsequently developed cones of depression in the T1 aquifer. 
as the use of the T1 aquifer in West Lakes and Grange is primarily irrigation, we can measure seasonal fluctuations in groundwater levels. Summer irrigation produces a decline in groundwater levels, followed by a recovery in groundwater level during winter. It's more of a temporary cone of depression and changes of 15 metres are observed between summer and winter. The Thebiton cone of depression is more permanent as groundwater extraction for industrial use is not influenced by the seasons, thus there is no opportunity for water levels to fully recover. The current status of groundwater resources in the central area of the Adelaide Plains and the bulk of the Northern Adelaide Plains has been assigned a yellow light by the Department for Water. Indicating the adverse trends we can measure are gradual and if continued will not lead to a significant impact on the current uses of the groundwater for at least 15 years. One area, Kangaroo Flat, has a red light and trends indicate degradation of the resources occurring or will occur within five years. This degradation may make the water unsuitable for drinking or irrigation. The Adelaide Mount Lofty Ranges Natural Resources Management Board is currently developing a water allocation plan for the water resources beneath Adelaide. This plan is being developed in consultation with users and is based on scientific information. It's designed to give all users, including the environment, a fair share of the available groundwater resources. If you'd like to know more about the Board's water allocation plan, please visit their website. Show.